and I don't think anything has really been impacted in terms of um, the post position draw. I mean, I don't think there were any big negatives, any big surprises. Um, but in terms of how you all think that the pace is going to develop, I mean, I, I've heard a couple of different opinions about this. Um, how, how do you guys envision the race? How do you envision the race? Pace-wise? Um, it's, I, to be honest with you, the post draw today sort of solidified it for me. So I, I think Promises Fulfilled has one way to go, and that's mm -hmm. right to the front. I think Dale's made that abundantly clear. That's the horse's only Several chance. Times. <laughs> yep. Which is almost, it's almost to the point of being suspicious. <laughs> almost. Um, but the thing is, he's got a horse that can take advantage of a fast pace. Uh, so Promises Fulfilled goes. Um, I'm looking for Flame Away, Justify, and a, a little bit of Noble Indy to be up close. And I think those are the three or four horses that go by us the first time. What are the wild cards? Uh, Paco Lopez on Frenze Fire. Mm -hmm. uh, he, as we all know, is a very aggressive rider. So does he send it from the inside? And you can pick up on this, too, yeah. because you have some in special insight. <laughs> so I, I mean, he's, he's a very aggressive oh, rider. Yeah. So if he wants to, you know, step on the gas with Frenze Fire... It might matter for a furlong. I'm, you know, I, I don't really know how long it could matter for. I'm <laughs> it's, much, it's much faster. Um, and then, so the, what the, the big story to this race, and I said it on Twitter the other day, and I said it earlier when we were talking, is you had a large amount of what I call, you know, EP horses or presser early, presser types, just off the pace types that want to make their moves in the middle portions of the race. And the mm -hmm. list of that is, of those types is extremely long from... I mean, you could argue Audible falls into that category if he needs to. He probably doesn't in this particular race. But Bolt Doro, Justify are sort of those horses that want to make their move from the 5.8s pull probably to the far turn. Noble Indy falls into that category. You could argue, argue Good Magic, who made that long sustained run in both the Breeders' Cup and in the Bluegrass, could make that sort of rally as well. And you could have this big middle move type race, which would then potentially collapse it in a big way and set up for some big closers. Um, how fast his promises fulfilled go? He's not going to go but we 40. Haven't, I will say, we haven't seen that happen in how, how many, since Orb. Yes, but you know what the difference is, though? I mean, so Dancing Candy is probably a better version of promises fulfilled. Um, who are some other pace setters I'm thinking of? Firing Line, that, mm -hmm. that pace for all intents, but it was actually on the fair side. It wasn't that quick. Promises fulfilled is almost a throwback to what we saw pre-points derbies. Mm -hmm. He is a fast, miler-type horse that's going to gas this race up. And if anybody wants to try and go with him, I think we're then we're starting to talk about a low 46, potentially high 45 pace. Mm -hmm. I think it's more likely to be mid to high 46s, which brings virtually everybody into the conversation. But um, I think the key part of this race is what's going to happen on that far turn when they all start to make the move. Picture in derbies where Big Brown makes the five wide far turn. I think of all the replays I've watched of past derbies, that derby feels like the derby we're going to look at, right? Remember, um, it was uh, Eight Bells was forwardly placed in that race. Mm -hmm. She stuck around for a piece. And it was sort of a big, huge, like, crush of horses making a move. It's that third it's that, move, yeah, that, that third yeah, flight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I think we're, it's not going to be a slow pace. I don't think Promises Fulfilled could wire this field. Uh, if he turns for home in front, um, you know, maybe the world ends before he hits the wire. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> I was thinking when we sort of touched on this on, on Twitter, like when, when is your voice going to raise a pitch higher when promises <laughs> fulfilled it's still on the front end? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's not. You know, I mean, even to me, hitting the far turn on the front end, I would be shocked. Yeah, I mean, he could be. But even then, you're still thinking, OK, someone's coming. Yeah. Like you said, if he turns for home in front, like Bodie Meister did, yeah. my jaw will be on the on Yeah, the I don't, I don't sure. think. So, I mean, at that point, is he even a factor for those horses that are going to get second, third, and fourth? I mean, Flame Away probably because Flame Away is not as good as the rest of them. But Justify can almost sit right off of both of them and almost inherit the lead, inherit the lead in his, like, routine cruising yeah. speed, you know, and not even have to make a move for it, which was, is, so it's like a dominoes effect. He's going to move and that's going to force Bolt Throw to move, who's going to force Good Magic to move, who's going to force Mendelssohn to move, and all of a sudden you've got all these horses making these moves in the two furlong part of the race. Could get really interesting when they yeah, turn for Yeah, like, based on the Santa Anita Derby, you cannot wait for Justify to no. take the race to yeah. him, and yeah. it's the thing that scares me the most about him and he won't be on the front end like American Pharaoh was in the Breeders' Cup Classic. But once he gets there, if you let him go, he's gone. Yeah. And that was a good classic, toneless, 
uh, the McGahey horse. Uh, there were some good horses in there that never got with, I mean, it was never threatened. And FNX at a big price ended up second. That's what worries me most about Justify is, mm -hmm. okay, he took over for Promises Fulfilled. I'm going to sit chilly and wait for him to back out of it now. And he'll be gone. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yep. Friends Fire is interesting. I mean, that kind of sparked, sparked my interest. I don't give him any shot to cash a check, let alone yeah. win. Yeah. But if he can muddy things for Justify, uh, you know, I, I want every horse to have a fair shot, but I want to cash a ticket too. Yeah, I mean, I went back and watched a lot of replays between the post draw and now uh, for the horses drawn four inward um, and then uh, Forensic Fire. The one thing I didn't really, because we think Forensic Fire, we think closer, right? I mean, we think like dead closer, but looking at the room, not only. But he has sprinter type speed. It, I mean, he won, he won the Sanford. You yeah, know, I mean, it, and that was a lightning fast pace. And I think it was a length or two off the pace. I mean, so, mm -hmm. um, but looking at all those races, what stood out to me about Frenzy Fire was that he actually always breaks alertly. It's incredible. A few strides out of the gate. So if you give Paco Lopez that cue, you're gone. <laughs> I mean, without even trying, he's ahead of the entire field. Now, if you're actually trying, if, if you actually send him and, and you see the same thing, he breaks first. And he gets taken back mm -hmm. at least a length or two off, and then some races even, even farther back. Um, but yeah, I mean, with Paco up, I mean, what do they have to lose if they send them? I mean, Nothing. what do they have to lose? So I think I, I I'm almost convinced that that he's gonna he's gonna really make things interesting, and and, and it obviously promises fulfilled goes. And so for me, this in my mind, this this, this scenario that that I created was that um, Flame Away sits a nice stalking trip. And maybe, I mean, of course, there's the crush of horses coming over, but looking back, I mean, his, his, the Sam Davis, um, <clears throat> one of many gutsy performances, he made the lead, same in the bluegrass, goes to the lead, gets pressed, sticks around. But in the Tampa Bay Derby, he showed that he could rate. I mean, he wasn't completely settled, but he did rate. And so, and, and, and they, were, they were going pretty slow early, too. So, I don't know. I, I think, I know you just said he, he's not as good as them. On paper, he isn't. Um, but I could see a situation where <clears throat> I don't want to take any shots. I mean, I, 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 I would prefer a different <laughs> rider up on the horse. Um, but if he can work out a trip, um, you know, I, I think things are going to break right now. The question is if promises fulfilled and, um, you know, forensic fire start backing up into him, what, what happens then? So, I don't know, if he can settle, um, he's one that's interesting to me, and I, and I think that um, he could he could if he can wait a little bit to make his move. He was I mean he truly was flying at the end of the Tampa Bay Derby, and I, I don't think the distance is any issue either. So now it's just a matter of you know getting a trip for me uh, as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, I agree. And then going back to your conversation with you know as far as like where's Justify right? I mean is he mm -hmm. is he is he waiting? Is he is he going? Um, and then Victor Espinoza spoke to him earlier, and he was like, I don't know if you saw, he tweeted it. He was like, yeah, he's like, he's like I've got my eyes on Justify. He thinks he's going to the lead. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Right there with him. So, I mean, you've got that element, too. I mean, you know, Victor doesn't, doesn't care. So that's the thing. That's the, <laughs> um, that's the, like, the waterfall conversation, right? So if they're all, because even Chad Brown said, yeah, probably a good horse we're going to follow around there is Justify. So everybody's going to follow Justify because they should. He's probably the best horse in the race. So... If he is a supreme talent and he's better than all of these and they all try and follow this justify move on the far turn, they are one by one going, going to have to their heart, they're, yeah, they're, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. But then they're going to one by one have their hearts broken, right? Yeah. And they're not going to be able to keep up and they're going to give up. And that yeah. makes, you know, that makes everything. I was actually, um, when I heard Chad Brown say that today, I was like, no, oh, that's kind of interesting because I sort of thought Good Magic's trip was going to be the mid-pack. Let all this stuff happen. And then I'm going to come with my run at the end, and maybe I can pick up a leg weary Justify who's feeling the effects of being a lightly raced, non race two year old. Um, and maybe some distance questions. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, so some, so some of that as well. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I don't think Fallen Justify is necessarily the right movement race like the Derby because so much happens in, in between calls that you can compromise your horse's ability to make his best run. And uh, I just I found that to be interesting. I as for Flame Away, you can't knock his fight. He's such a, a gutsy, you know, game horse. But it's interesting. He was only length and a half off Good Magic. 
who is going to be what? I think Good Match is eight to one ish. I don't you know, yeah, maybe one. around there. And what's Flameway going to be? Thirty. Thirty. Yeah. I think one piece of this we we didn't touch on yet, uh, so I will. Uh, and you sort of mentioned all the EP types. Um, Mendelssohn, what Ryan Moore does on him, one gate to wire in UAE. That's not happening here. I keep going back to the race uh, in Ireland. His synthetic try. They had it over a barrel. He won easily. He was. Ryan Moore clearly made the decision to take this horse inside when he didn't have to. And these are world-class connections that I have a feeling that was by design, that they wanted to give him that education. He only had one horse to beat, and it was clear he was going to win, and he still went inside and then took off. And that's what excites me about this horse for this race. Yeah, the UAE Derby, as you said, you win by 18. Your eyes are popping out. It was great. The thoroughbred figure was almost unheard of for a three-year-old. He's carried 126 already. There's things to like about the UAE Derby. Going back to that race at Dundalk, though, that's what tells me, hey, this is an actual derby threat. And they were thinking it from day one, really right after the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Tour. He moved inside. He might not have to do that in the derby. Maybe he gets in the clear and wins like he did at UAE. But that gives me extra confidence where normally with a UAE horse I wouldn't have. 